If you have been around for a while, you know we often look to site of the day winners for inspiration. But last week, I picked this website which won site of the month and it's packed with some seriously stunning animations. Out of all the cool effects, today I'm going to show you how to recreate this entire incredible scroll experience that's filled with smooth micro animations. Here is a quick preview of what we'll be building. Inspired by that award winning page, I redesigned the entire scroll sequence with multiple moving parts. In this tutorial, you will learn how to pin a section, create synchronized flicker text animation, animate the clip art sequences while also adding zoom effect to images, and even revealing text, all triggered by scroll using scroll trigger. Honestly, I haven't seen many channels covering these types of animations, especially at this pace, two videos a week, keeping up with all the latest trends. Creating this content takes a lot of time and effort, so if you are enjoying it, I would really appreciate a like. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing too. To access the source code, check out the pro membership, the link is in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Let's start by creating a container for our content. We'll need 4 sections, the hero section, the about section, a sticky section and finally the footer. In the hero section, we'll add an h1 element for the title and a paragraph element for some text. The about section will split into two parts, one for an image and another for the text. The image wrapper will hold the image element while the copy will include another h1 for the heading. Now let's focus on the key part of our page, the sticky section. Here we'll add five elements, the intro text which will have the flicker animation, three image wrappers where we'll apply the clip path animations and the copy element which will act as our outro text. Inside the intro, we'll create two columns. The first column will contain two paragraphs and the second column will have one. Each image wrapper will hold an image with the appropriate source. We'll apply clip path animations to the wrappers and scale animations to the images. Lastly, the copy element will contain an H1 with some placeholder text. For the footer, we'll simply add another H1. And that's it for the HTML structure, now let's move on to styling. We start by importing the Roboto Mono font and setting up a universal reset with margin padding and box sizing properties. For the HTML and body, we have set the height to 700 viewport height because we'll need extra space to scroll when pinning the sticky section. The first three sections will take up 100 viewport height each while the remaining 400 viewport height will be reserved for the sticky section to ensure smooth scrolling animations. Images are set to take up the 100% of their container with object fit cover to maintain aspect ratio and fill the space. For all H1 elements, we are using the FK Screamer font making them uppercase with a larger font size of 1500 viewport width to ensure they scale up well across different screen sizes. We also adjust the letter spacing, line height and color. The paragraph text follows a similar style using the uppercase text and a smaller font size of 14 pixels with a weight of 400. Each section has a full width and height of 100 viewport width and 100 viewport height respectively to fill the entire viewport. Now for the hero section, we center everything with flexbox, adding padding and aligning the content in the middle of the screen. We also apply a background image with background size cover to ensure it fills the section properly. In the about section, we use flexbox again to divide the content into two parts, an image and text. We give the image a border and align it alongside the copy. The text inside the about section uses a different color palette to match the background. Lastly, the footer is kept simple with center text using the same styling approach as the hero and about sections to maintain consistency. For the sticky section, we add some key effects. 
we apply perspective to create a 3D like effect and position the intro text centrally with an absolute position and a transform to vertically center it. We then divide the intro text into two columns, each containing paragraph styled to align properly. The first column's text spans flexibly while the second column's text is aligned to the right. For the images, we position them absolutely and apply clip path properties on both the second and third images. In a way, they only show the center rectangle part of the second image and hide the third image entirely. We also apply scale effect to the third image as part of the animation sequence. The copy element is styled to rotate and scale, giving it a dynamic 3D effect, but it's initially hidden to be revealed during the scroll animation. For the mobile responsiveness, we adjust the font size, padding, and layout to ensure the design adapts well to smaller screens. That covers the CSS, now let's move on to adding animations. Alright, let's jump into the JavaScript, starting with setting up scroll trigger and smooth scrolling. First, we register the scroll trigger plugin and grab the sticky section from the DOM. We also define the total sticky height, which is 4 times the window's height to create enough scroll space for our pinned section. Next, I am using Lennis for smooth scrolling. This code is taken from their GitHub documentation and helps us achieve that seamless scroll effect. We hook it up with scroll trigger so it updates correctly as the user scrolls through the page. Now, I have also added a helper function to split the text in the intro section into individual letters. This makes it easier to control each letter separately for animations. Here is how it works. For each paragraph inside the intro column, we take its text content, split it by spaces, and then split each word into individual characters. Each character is then wrapped in a span element with opacity 0 to hide it initially, so we can animate the letters later. This prepares our text for the flicker animation that will be triggered by scrolling. Now that we have prepared the text, let's move on to the flicker animation. I have created a function called flicker animation that takes two arguments, targets and opacity. This function animates the opacity of the specified targets, in this case, the individual letters inside the intro text. We set up the opacity to the target value with a very short duration of 0.5 seconds to create that quick flicker effect. Using stagger, we can animate the letters in a random order which adds to the flicker's dynamic feel. Next, I have set up a scroll trigger for the sticky section. The trigger starts when the top of the sticky section hits the top of the viewport and ends after 3 times the window's height. As the user scrolls, the flicker animation is triggered. On entering the section, the letters fade in and when leaving, they fade out. This behavior is mirrored for scrolling back up, so the effect works smoothly in both directions. Next, we'll pin the sticky section. I have set up another scroll trigger instance to pin the sticky section in place. The trigger starts when the top of the sticky section reaches the top of the viewport and stays pinned for the total sticky height, which we calculated earlier. I have also enabled pin spacing to ensure everything else on the page shifts correctly when the section is pinned.
Now for the first image inside the sticky section, I am adding a scaling effect. As the user scrolls, the image smoothly scales up by 1.125. I will set up the scrub option to true, meaning the scaling animation will sync with the user scrolls position, creating a smooth and responsive experience. Now let's move on to animating the clip path of the second image. For this animation, we are using GSAP to gradually change the clip path property of the second image. Initially, the image is clipped to a polygon shape. The clip path transitions to cover the entire image, making it appear as though the image is being revealed. The scroll trigger is tied to the sticky section and with the scrub option enabled, the clip path animation is synced with the user scroll, ensuring a smooth transition. Now to understand this better, the onUpdate function updates the clip path in real time as you scroll. The key part is using GSAP interpolate function which allows us to calculate the changing values of each corner of the polygon. For example, the top left point starts at 40% and moves to 0%, while other points follow similar transitions, creating a smooth reveal of the image from the center outward. To find the exact starting and ending values of the clip path, you can use this tool to play around with the different shapes. This helps visualize the initial and end values you want to animate, and it's something I often use to experiment with these clip path values. In simple terms, as you scroll, the image is being revealed from a polygon shape dynamically adjusting with each scroll step which creates a clean and visually engaging effect. Now let's move on to scaling the second image and animating the clip path for the third image. For the second image, we apply a similar scaling effect as before. The image scales up to 1.125 as the user scrolls with the animation synced to the scroll position using scrub. This ensures that the image scales smoothly as you move through the sticky section, providing a consistent and responsive animation. Next, for the third image, we are using another clip path animation. Initially, the image is clipped to a polygon shape and as the user scrolls through the final part of the sticky section, the clip path gradually expands to reveal the entire image. Similarly to the previous clip path animation, we use the onUpdate function to dynamically update the polygon points. We calculate these values using GSAP's interpolate utility function, which allows the clip path points to shift smoothly from their initial positions to the edges of the image. For example, the starting points of the polygon shape are at 50% and as the user scrolls, these points transition to 0% and 100%, revealing the image in a progressive manner. For the second image, after the initial scale up effect to 1.125, I am further animating it to scale up to 1.25 as we move through the final part of the sticky section. This subtle increase in scale adds a bit more depth to the animation, making the scroll feel more dynamic. The from to function ensures that the animation starts from the scaled up value and smoothly transitions to the new scale. Moving on to the third image, we are doing the opposite by scaling it down. The image is set to scale down to 2.9 as the user scrolls through the last part of the sticky section. This creates a visual interesting effect where the image appears to zoom in dramatically, drawing the attention to the final portion of the animation. As before, both of these animations are synchronized with the user scroll using scrub so the transitions feel natural and responsive. Now let's finish up the animation for the third image. After scaling the third image down to 2.9, we need to reset the scale by zooming it back out to its original position. We achieve this using the from to method again, starting from a scale of 2.9 and transitioning back down to 1. The zoom out effect occurs as we move to its final stages of the sticky section, ensuring that the image returns to its original state before the scroll animation ends. Once again, we are using scrub to keep the zoom synchronized with the scroll, making sure the effect feels smooth and responsive. 
To wrap things up, we'll animate the final text reveal in this tricky section. I've created a GSAP timeline specifically for this. The copy element which has been hidden up until now will be revealed as you scroll through the final part of this tricky section. The timeline begins halfway through this section and ends near the bottom. As this scroll progresses, the copy element is revealed by rotating it back to its original position with rotated Y0, scaling it to full size with scale 1 and making it visible by setting display to block. This creates a smooth and impactful transition for the final message, ensuring it stands out as we conclude the scrolling sequence. The scrub option once again ties the animation to the user scrolls and the toggle actions ensure the animation plays forward and reverses smoothly depending on the scroll direction. And that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.